It is Friday, March 11th. Let's talk PlayStation. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's uh, another interesting week here where we've got uh, not only a state of play to go over, but also, well, more rumors, which is uh, not surprising at all because there's not really a shortage of those going around. But um, let's start off, as always, with our PlayStation Plus reminder. The March games that are still available, go ahead and grab them. And this is probably a good time to actually talk about one of our stories here, which is about a uh, one of the PS Plus games and an issue with it, which is Ghost of Shima Legends. And this game is uh, in the same situation that we saw with Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade and the licensing conflict there. So if you remember, that's kind of the same thing here. So this doesn't really affect a lot of people, but if you're in this very unique situation, this is what happens where if you say... Let's say you already claimed Legends on PS5, right, through PS Plus, and then you have a PS4 copy of the full, you know, Ghost of Shima game, whether it's the base copy or director's cut, uh, and you're, of course, entitled to a discount fee for the full game on PS5, and, uh, well, if you already claim Legends on PS5, then you can't upgrade anymore. So it's uh, another PSN licensing issue where uh, PSN thinks you own the full game after claiming just Legends, which is only a small portion of the game. And what's even weirder is that um, even if you fall into this situation, you can still pay full price for Legends or full price for, you know, the director's cut on PS5. You're only locked out of the discounted fee for the upgrade. Um, and the same solution from Final Fantasy VII applies here where you can actually contact PlayStation support and just simply tell them your problem and also ask to, you can ask to have the license removed from your account and they'll do it. So they'll take Legends off your PSN. Um, off your your uh, transaction history and then you can actually uh, pay for the upgrade normally then go back claim legends and you can have it saved on your ps5 because the the big thing here is that you want to be able to have that convenience of playing just legends without using the disc um, that's what it was like for final fantasy essentially and um yeah it's weird uh yet again we're, we're seeing uh more psn licensing conflicts and um it's like we said previously it's just really bad optics when your competitor does not have this problem and sure, it doesn't really affect a lot of people, right? But we're talking about two very high-profile games, FF7 and Tsushima. This problem could easily affect, uh, let's say, hundreds, if not a few thousand people. And that's uh, a bummer, especially because they didn't learn their lesson from FF7. Um, you would think that they would hear about this issue, fix it, and then it's you know all sorted for any other you know upcoming games that are going to fall in this situation. But clearly that was uh, not the case. Uh, anyway, moving on to our next story, we've got a new PS5 system software update available to download now, which is 21.02.04.51, and this is a, a small update, so nothing crazy in here, just a slight improvement to overall system performance, which is welcomed, but probably a good time to at least remind people that we're anywhere from, you know, let's say two to three weeks away from a wide release of what's currently in beta right now, which is, um, you know, a firmware with about... 30 something changes and features and the headlining things in there is going to be the voice commands and also um, the quality of life changes to game base so yeah there's still no vrr no themes no 1440p um, maybe those will come after this update which again we'll probably see in the next uh, two three weeks or so next up we've got some patches for some playstation studio games uh, yet again another one for horizon patch 1.07 recently dropped and Gorilla's been doing a really good job at knocking out so many issues and bugs and uh, little things that break the uh, the quest in the game. So there's another very long change log here. Um, they're really doing some fantastic work on a weekly basis. Uh, but most notably with this patch, they do mention for the known issues that uh, they're making tweaks to the vegetation to improve image quality in the favor performance mode. And they're also still looking for feedback to uh, continue looking into or to find out what's going on with the shimmering, the sharpening, and screen saturation. So hopefully they get that sorted soon. Uh, they do also say for the fire gleam icons, that's another issue that a lot of people are reporting. Uh, those icons not being removed from the map. It looks like that will be fixed soon. And judging by their progress, uh, we're seeing a patch every week. So maybe we'll see that um, next week by Monday or Tuesday. Now, as for Gran Turismo 7, this game also saw a pretty lengthy change log with patch 1.06, uh, so it should be in a better state now, but it seems like when it came out, it was already okay, or at least versus Horizon, where, um, again, that's an open world, so those games tend to be very buggy because they're so hard to QA, but the point is, uh, Gran Turismo, for the most part, should be okay and only getting better, uh, but there's a caveat here. So the real issue is that when the game came out, 
the post-launch surprise is that the game's, uh, well, the in-game economy and also how credits are used, right? Microtransactions. So um, I guess the best way to phrase this is to look at Gran Turismo Sport, where that game, you can obviously play it, uh, earn credits, buy cars. You can sell the cars you have to get credits and use those to buy cars. Or you can head to the PS Store and uh, spend real life money to buy a car outright for, let's say, two, three dollars or whatever, right? Um, but you can do that. In Gran Turismo 7, this is a bit different. So, number one, you can't sell cars. Whatever you buy, you keep. Number two, you can't buy cars individually on PSN. You can only buy credits. And once those credits are in the game, that's where it's a bit wonky compared to the values of what we saw in GT Sport, where, again, you could buy a car for $5 in real-world money, but now with the way it works in GT7, it could be a lot more costly. Uh, 20, 40, you know, maybe over $100, depending on the car and how much it costs. The other really weird angle of this is that for the legendary cars in the game, uh, Gran Turismo or Polyphony has teamed up with the real life insurance company Haggerty, where that company specializes in insuring uh, classic and I believe also um, exotic vehicles, uh, which by the way, that's more advantageous for the the driver to go with them versus say a regular insurance company where they're going to charge you a rate as a daily driver and the, the value for those cars are so high so it just that's why you have companies like Haggerty and that's why polyphony has teamed up with them to uh well what they're doing is they're going to be valuing the cars in the game in real time so that the cars values can go up or down um based on the real life cars value which i mean on the surface, as a, an auto enthusiast, that kind of sounds cool, and you can see how it's a very Kazunori Yamauchi thing, but, I mean, <laughs> car values really only tend to go up. I mean, maybe I'm not watching them closely enough, but the thing about cars is that uh, for classics, um, you know, low-volume exotic cars, even newer ones, the inventory is set, right? I mean, it's just, it doesn't get any higher normally. Uh, really, it only gets lower over time when cars either um, unfortunately get totaled or maintenance costs are so high for the, the owner that they part it out or something, right? But generally, those cars uh, dwindle over time. Values go up. So that mechanic does not really fit that well for uh, a video game where the values are only going to go up. You can't even sell them to begin with. So it's just a really not good situation. Um, now, mind you, I'm not playing the game right now, so I can't speak on it. 100%. Uh, I am reading what a lot of people are saying. It seems like um, it's still something where you can earn the, the credits just fine uh, playing the game naturally over time, which, I mean, that's what I always recommend. Uh, I know people, you know, vehemently dislike microtransactions, and for good reason. They tend to be very predatory whenever they're inserted into a game, which, you know, comes out at full price. I'll always recommend just don't buy them. Like, under any circumstance, do not buy them. Do not engage with them. I will always recommend that. I don't think I've ever bought a microtransaction in a console game to be honest as far as i can remember uh, as far as i can remember i might have bought a sackboy costume uh during the ps3 days but the point is don't do it right uh however there is like a tipping point when they are there so if you're you know playing a game that's full price or whatever and um as long as it's not ridiculous where it takes a an insane amount of time to earn something naturally versus say throwing twenty dollars at the game and that's where the problem really sets in and so for this at least i would expect that uh most people are not engaging with those microtransactions not buying the credits and hopefully they'll be adjusted over time once uh polyphony realizes how you know this just not is not really an ideal scenario versus what we had with uh with gt sport um so perhaps that's something that will uh happen over time once they realize that these aren't selling as well or if they are selling well then well then they'll stick around which uh would not be a great outcome uh now getting into more positive consumer friendly news or at least what i would consider consumer friendly because this really surprised me, but uh, Grand Theft Auto V on PS5 Series S and X launching very soon, uh, March 15th, and we knew for a while that uh, three months on PS5 only, you can claim GTA Online for free, um, which is obviously a pretty nice benefit, but uh, what's also pretty cool is that for that three month period, the game is a $10 flat fee, so not an upgrade, you don't have to use the PS4 disc or anything, um, and it's not a free upgrade, but still, uh, it's a flat fee, $10.00 you get GTA 5 on PS5. Honestly, I really thought they were just gonna do a uh, full price from the get-go, um, you know, 50, 60 bucks, uh, no upgrade, which, you know, hearing 10 bucks, a flat fee for Rockstar, 
that is uh, surprising to me. After June 14th though, then it will go to, I believe $40 and then also 24 uh, GTA online. So just bear in mind during that upcoming three months, uh, make sure you claim at least GTA online or purchase Grand Theft Auto 5. Now let's talk about this new state of play that we got. Uh, Sony announced this on Tuesday and much like the previous ones, which is good, they've outlined what was going to be in it. This one was primarily going to be uh, announcements from Japanese publishers and also a few things outside of that. And that's exactly what we got. So first let's go over every single announcement then we'll do some impressions. Uh, first up, the state of play started with Exo Primal announced uh, by Capcom coming to PS5 and PS4 next year. It kind of looks like Dino Crisis, but probably better that it's not. Uh, also, we got a new trailer for Ghostwire Tokyo, still coming out March 25th for PS5. Then there was a new trailer for Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, and also a demo released uh, not right away, but shortly after, and that's something where your progress is going to carry over into the full game, so go check that out. Uh, we also got a new Forspoken gameplay trailer. Now that's coming October 11th, 2022. So this game was actually recently delayed uh, even before the state of play. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Gundam Evolution coming to PS5 and PS4 later this year with a network test in spring. Uh, next was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Cowabunga Collection coming this year, and this looks so good. Uh, 13 classic TMNT games, 40 bucks, uh, also available in physical. Gotta love that. Um, Giga Bash was announced. That's coming to PS5 and PS4 later this year. Uh, next was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R coming this year. That was a, uh, that shipped on PS3 back in the day, I think, right? So this is a new version. Uh, then there's a new trailer for Trek to Yomi coming spring 2022 to PS5 and PS4. This looks really good, actually. I think this is going to really surprise people. Uh, and then after that was Returnal, the Ascension update. This includes story co-op and also a new survival mode, which uh, it'll be a free update coming March 22nd. So no cost to the uh, to the player. Uh, also, the Dio Field Chronicles. This was announced coming 2022 to PS5 and PS4. And then also Valkyrie is back with Valkyrie Elysium uh, coming 2022 to PS5 and PS4 and that was it. Uh, so this is another good example of why Sony has been outlining exactly what's inside these state of plays or at least you know setting expectations right where they said this is primarily Japanese publishers a few extra things that's what this was. We've seen before, um, no hardware, no services. Uh, hey, there's no God of War in here. There's no announcements for PSVR 2. They've done that before, and it's good that they do that because you can walk into this knowing exactly what you're going to get. Um, the big problem with this show in particular, uh, which mind you, most state of plays nowadays aren't really received all that well. We should probably start to realize that state of plays are on the smaller side and you know the big announcements are gonna come from a PlayStation showcase, which is what we're calling them now. Before that would have been like E3 or um, Gamescom or, or what have you, right? But I digress. Um, the big problem with this show is that we're in the midst of waiting for a few things like a God of War release date, um, Hogwarts Legacy has PlayStation marketing, so we know Sony's gonna be the one to have it. It's gonna be on their terms to showcase that game again, or at least that's what we're expecting and that's what all the rumors keep applying. It makes sense. Um, so there's that. Uh, we're close enough to spring, so Final Fantasy 16, uh, given the nature of this show, it would have been great to see it here. Of course, it, it wasn't. Uh, but the bigger stuff, PSVR 2, that still needs a, a big full-blown reveal with games, price, release. If they're planning on launching that um, holiday season this year or even Q1 2023, then you know all that stuff has to come sooner rather than later. And I was still expecting before GDC, but clearly that's not going to be happening. Um, and then also Spartacus, right? The, uh, the service revamp, which... I don't know if I've said this before, but I expect that to really just be a PlayStation blog post. Um, they don't really do like service announcements anymore in live streams. They might do like a video that's just uploaded to YouTube or something, right? But the PS blog will have all those details. They'll post an FAQ and that's really it, or at least that's what I'm expecting. Previously, we've only seen uh, State of Plays say, hey, this game's in... Uh, PS Plus uh, next month or something, right? They'll briefly say that. Or the PS Plus collection was one trailer we got in the uh, initial PS5 live stream. So service-based things uh, might not really fit in a live stream per se, but that's just what I'm expecting. Uh, either way, we have a lot that we're waiting for and also a lot of speculation about a PlayStation event in March. So to have this state of play show up, it's just, 
given the circumstance, this wasn't really going to turn out well. Um, and again, most people don't seem to like state of plays anymore, or at least uh, the reception is always not that positive. But, you know, the thing is, state of plays are not major PlayStation showcases. So we might have one or two surprises in there, but it's just not going to be a big event anymore, or at least it, it really never was. Um, that and, you know, I've said before, and I really mean it, I would be okay with more state of plays. Let's do one every let's say every other month, and that's gonna be a great way to target a certain audience um, or just uh, showcase a bunch of indies or, you know, like here's 10, 20 minutes of gameplay clips, uh, a bunch of trailers for games coming out in the next four or five months, and those can sit in between all the, um, all the major events. So that way it seems like there's always something going on while we're waiting for the big events. That's at least, you know, how I would do it or how I'd like them to do it, but um, that's, that's not the case. Now, easily one of the uh, bigger tragedies, if not the biggest tragedy of that state of play, was we did not get an update on Stray. But there is some good news here. A very small update that uh, Annapurna Interactive actually said before state of play went live, which is uh, over on Twitter they mentioned, uh, for those asking about a Stray update, it won't be a state of purr today. It's still coming this year though. Uh, so originally the game was slated for early 2022, and now it's just broadly coming out sometime this year. Um, hopefully it does. It's something where me and Melissa are very excited and I would like to think that we had something to do with this, uh, with this tweet. So I think we applied just enough pressure to get a small but very meaningful update out of them. Moving on to our next news story, we've got more PlayStation Productions news. And this one, I guess, is not at all surprising given how well known this property is, but it seems like a live action God of War TV series is currently in negotiations at Amazon Prime as reported by Deadline. So right now Deadline is uh, reporting this as more of a rumor, so it's not confirmed at all, but um, they're saying that this is in negotiations right now at Amazon. And this would be uh, something from the Expanse creators and executive producers, Mark Fergus and Hawk Osby, and the Wheel of Time executive producer and showrunner, Rafe Judkins. And this would of course also be a collaboration between Sony Pictures, PlayStation Productions, and Amazon Studios. So yeah, I think this actually was inevitable because currently with uh, PS Productions again they're very busy right now they've got uh, well they put out finally the Uncharted movie um, Last of Us HBO Twisted Metal at Peacock uh, also the Ghost of Tsushima movie we know that's coming and now possibly this which <clears throat> again God of War is the arguably right now the most well-known PlayStation property so with this um, my only gut reaction concern is that <clears throat> not so much who plays Kratos, because I think actually there's a, a number of actors that with the right build can can play that character quite well. We've actually seen live action versions and commercials over the years, and I think it actually looks quite convincing. My concern is the larger than life, you know, epicness of God of War, right? We're talking the crazy battles and blood and all that. There's just so much going on in God of War. For a TV series, no less, I mean, what kind of budget is that realistically going to have and is it going to be good enough? That's the only thing that I can um, think of immediately where God of War might not, um, from a story point of view, God of War might not be that demanding. People would probably want it to, you know, lean into a story in a much better way than the games were able to do, at least from 1 to Ascension. Um, obviously, the 2018 God of War is the most meaningful story that we've seen in that franchise you know so far but um yeah i think there's still there's a few hurdles here when it comes to god of war in particular so this will be really fascinating to watch the progress on this one assuming it's uh, assuming it's real now of course one very unfortunate reality happening right now is the war in ukraine and playstation has decided to uh, issue a statement which we it seemed like we knew this was coming once they weren't selling Gran Turismo 7 in Russia, but uh, PlayStation recently put out this statement on Twitter where they say, and I quote here, Sony Interactive Entertainment joins the global community in calling for peace in Ukraine. We have suspended all software and hardware shipments, the launch of Gran Turismo 7, and operations of the PlayStation Store in Russia. To support humanitarian aid, Sony Group Corporation announced a U.S. $2 million donation to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and the international NGO Save the Children to support the victims of this tragedy. Uh, now, this was shortly after Microsoft released a similar statement, that and many other companies as well, where they're ceasing operations in Russia for the time being. And, you know, obviously this is not really a topic that comes up too often on Let's Talk PlayStation, but... 
the one thing we can probably say here is that you know we have to remember certain topics and uh, world events are a lot more important than video games, but for a lot of people, video games and watching YouTube or whatever else, that's escapism for people, especially for the last two years, which has been absolutely exhausting, and I'm right there with you. So to have this now happen, it's just like, come on. Uh, so yes, it's an absolutely terrible situation. I can only imagine what the people of Ukraine are going through right now. Uh, also, citizens of Russia, where they don't want this war to begin with, or you know many of them don't right and so it's just it's terrible it's hard to watch and again I, I can't even imagine what these people are are going through but I do hope as well that uh, this is this is over soon now moving on and not to add more bad news here in a row but we have more bad news which is uh, if you remember the sexual harassment lawsuit filed in November 2021 by a former SIE employee alleging a toxic work environment, not being able to get promotions, uh, discriminating against women, um, a lot of you know things in that lawsuit, but um, that was back in November, and recently it looks like Sony tried to get that case dismissed uh, by citing not enough facts to support the case itself. And at the time, she was still trying to get it pushed to a class action lawsuit, which today it looks like eight more employees have actually stepped forward, um, seven former employees and one current employee, and they're all you know adding comments and anecdotes and experiences working at the company, and uh, it's not looking very good. We don't have a whole lot of time here to dive into the entire thing, but it's just really disappointing, and this is kind of why I often say that when Sony does a really nice effort with you know donating or something. It's always good, obviously. You know, any company that's willing to, you know, foot the bill for millions and millions of dollars to a good cause, it's always good news. You can't really argue against it. But we have to remember that, you know, every company has monsters in the closet somewhere. And, you know, this was one of them. And it's probably not the only situation, right? I'm sure there's a lot more uh, to this and even outside of this. So it, it really sucks to see this, but I would hope that Sony is willing to settle in an appropriate way that benefits the people that are directly involved and more so really bettering that work environment so this doesn't happen again. Um, that would be the ideal scenario, but uh, I'm not hopeful just based on what we normally see with any other major corporation. All right, uh, so let's get into those rumors. Uh, like I mentioned during the State of Play discussion, uh, Forspoken was delayed, even a little bit before the, the event, but that doesn't matter here. The point is that uh, last week on LTPS, we were talking about Account NGT. That's the uh, one Twitter account where previously they got the Star Wars Eclipse name and logo correct, and then they started tweeting about more you know PlayStation-related rumors, and that's why we've been watching them to see, okay, how reliable is this person going to be? And well, it turns out, you know, Forspoken was delayed, which um, going back to last week's episode, that's what they said very recently on March 2nd. According to a source, Forspoken is delayed. It could be officially announced at that PlayStation event. Not sure. Uh, so now at least we can look a little bit more critically uh, at this account and think that maybe they are reliable. Granted, that's uh, still a pretty... Not a, not a crazy opinion or not a crazy prediction to throw out there that Forspoken might be delayed, right? It's just, uh, it could be very good and coincidental or they perhaps actually do know something. So at the very least, we can once again look back at the uh, tweet where they say, I can corroborate that a new Sly Cooper and a new Infamous are in development. They actually put out a new tweet saying, according to a source for Sly, they are aiming for a reveal for the second half of 2022, which makes sense since later this year is Sly's 20th anniversary. Um, now, as far as I can remember, Special Nick from Xbox, uh, from the Xbox Era podcast and XboxEra.com, he did actually say this uh, quite a while ago from what I remember, and he also recently put out another tweet saying, okay, my source has given me some, uh, has given me the green light to uh, talk about this, but apparently it is Pixel Opus in collaboration with Sony Animation, but uh, bear in mind, Special Nick has definitely put out some things before that are extremely questionable, and recently he was uh, banned on... Uh, he was banned on Reset Era for, I guess, antagonizing mods or something. I don't know. It's a kind of a back and forth thing where he's not willing to do the, the vetting process or they're not going to take the uh, info that he's trying to provide, or at least not how he's trying to provide it. Whole messy thing, not trying to get into that, but it just seems like um, when he mentioned Sly and Infamous are returning, that that might have been, there might have been some credibility to that. Uh, account NGT also retweets this tweet in particular. So 
I really hope this is true. Um, again, I'm still a little iffy, but I would love for it to be a thing. Um, so if it is Pixel Opus, Sony Pictures Animation, I mean, that just, you know, your, your mind can kind of run wild there because it would just be so amazing. And between the, the PS2, uh, you know, trio, if you will, Jack, Ratchet, and, um, and Sly Cooper. Now, I love Ratchet and Clank, I really do. But if I had to rank them, for me, obviously it's Jack. Sly Cooper's number two. I really love the Sly Cooper games. So that would be just, mm, that would be ace if it really does come back. Um, Pixel Opus makes sense, but it could very well be uh, somewhere else. Uh, same for Infamous, right? Where Sucker Punch is a bit too busy. So it's like, where is that game really gonna go? And is it gonna be in good hands, you know? Um, which there's a few developers being th uh, thrown out there that might be able to do the job, you know, reasonably well. Like Sumo Digital is a, a good, su a good suggestion. Um, or they've actually been handling the uh, Little Big Planet property for a bit, and they do a pretty good job at it. It's just, uh, you know, there's always a little bit of uh, uneasiness when you know uh, another studio is going to handle it. But uh, so far, at least, I'm liking what we're seeing so far. I would just like more to come out, or obviously for these to be real in the first place. Uh, now, getting into our next story, we have a great example here of why we have to be so careful with random tweets and Twitter accounts and rumors, and we have to be picky with this stuff. So, if you remember, we talked about this Twitter account last week where it was a brand new account. Um, allegedly, it was uh, an owner or the same owner from a, a reliable account that got deleted, and we talked about the legitimacy of that rumor and that tweet where they said uh, PlayStation was bringing back some popular franchise or something, and uh, this past week, they actually put out another tweet where they say, PlayStation have privately acquired the rights to a very popular Konami IP. It is rumored to be the game I referred to in my earlier leak. More info next week. And unsurprisingly, a lot of websites actually published this. And then the Twitter account uh, said, I was never meant to be a scooper. This account was meant to be essentially the onion for game leaks. I started by posting an extremely vague rumor and posted it on Reddit thinking I'll maybe get 80 followers or something, but it blew up. A bunch of YouTube news channels started claiming they did research and I was legit to get more views and then journalists started covering it. You'd think they'd look a little further than a single Reddit comment if they wanted people to think they're a credible source, right? Uh, so this is uh, pretty much what I was getting at last week when I said um, there's no way to verify if they're the, the same account owner from one previously that was accurate. You know, at the time I, I couldn't find it. So that's why I said that. Um, or I couldn't find evidence or screenshots or whatever else. So I'm like, how do you verify this? Um, and yes, the tweet was very broad and open. And that's what I warned is that, well, this seems like, uh, we've seen this before, right? In fact, we had John Cartwright recently do kind of a case study on this where he made a fake Nintendo Insider Twitter account. Um, broad predictions, deleted the ones that were wrong or whatever else that he did, but it was really brilliant, right? And he proved that, you know, a lot of these sites just kind of jump on this stuff way too quick. Um, and that's why, like, at least for me, I can't speak for other sources. And I know I'm not your only source for, you know, watching or hearing about PlayStation News, but this is why I like to be a bit picky on this channel and not talk about every rumor that is out there, right? So uh, it's good to see that, um, you know, this uh, account actually came out and kind of, you know, was like, really, like, you guys can't figure this out? Um, because, yeah, a lot of sites uh, ran with that uh, that tweet about Konami right away, and it was like, okay, um, well, that's just how it goes sometimes, right? But that was definitely funny. Uh, now, with all that said, it is time for Let's Talk Plus, the weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway, where one of you can win a $10 PSN code. I would like to congratulate this viewer right here. I'll be contacting you very soon via email or Twitter. And if you would like to win a $10 PSN code, it's very easy. Follow the link down below. Supporting this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry. And I'll announce the winner next week because I'm trying to help pay for your games. Those are all the stories that I wanted to talk about you all from this past week. Our Tuesday video was a PlayStation VR retrospective after five years and right before PSVR 2. Just how good was PlayStation VR? Go check out that discussion. And coming up, uh, well, we're still waiting on a lot of things, like we said, but um, as always, we're sitting here, we're waiting, and we'll talk about them when it shows up. But for the time being, we'll probably have something else uh, on Tuesday as, as usual. But that's it. Uh, that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Benecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you all next Friday.